In today's NFL, mobility and athleticism is basically a prerequisite for playing quarterback. Even the white guys can do it. Being able to move your feet opens up the playbook. It puts stress on the defense and it gives quarterbacks that extra option beyond throwing the ball away or taking a sack. But it wasn't always like this. There used to be a stigma regarding running quarterbacks that their wheels were a gimmick a Super Bowl could only be won within the confines of the pocket. And now looking back, it's hard to believe that these guys just couldn't run. The most immobile QBs in NFL history is coming up right after this. What's this? Another juicy week of the NFL and the NBA. Stop wasting your time and knowledge and start making money with prize picks. That's right, using my code five points. All first time users on prize picks will receive an instant deposit match up to $100. You deposit $69, prize picks will give you $69. Nice. It's simple. You pick two to six players and then decide if they will get more or less of their prize pick projection. And you can win, get this, 25 times your money on any entry. This week, I'm going with Brock Purdy more, Lamar Jackson more, and CJ Stroud all with more passing yards. Good luck. Prize Picks also has a promotion schedule, so you can take advantage of deals like Taco Tuesday or Flex Fridays, where you can win your money back up to $20. Your money is safe and can be easily withdrawn. And don't forget, these are the eligible states. So after this video, first time users go to prizepicks.com or download the app from the link below and use my code five points for a 100% deposit match up to $100. Again, that's promo code five points on prize picks. What better place to start than with the GOAT? Tom Brady. One of the most iconic images in the history of the NFL Combine is Brady. Still a youthful 23 years old looking like he was running the 40 yard dash in slow motion. As it would turn out for the next couple of decades, straight line speed was not a necessity in winning seven Super Bowls. Brady ran for just 1,123 yards in his career. Sounds like a lot, but it's really pretty meager when you remember that it all happened over the course of 23 years. Just for reference, Justin Fields ran for more yards in 2022 alone. Of course, most of Brady's rushing attempts were either quarterback sneaks or kneel downs, but when he had a wide open space in front of him, he could kick into that extra gear and show off that 5-2 speed. The greatest run of Brady's career happened in 2006 and it was a jaw dropper to say the least. He put Brian Erlacher on skates, picking up a crucial third and nine against the Bears. And he must've been doing something right in 2006 because that's also the season he picked up his longest career run, a whopping 22 yarder against the Bengals. Brady also made a couple brief cameos as a receiver in his time with the Patriots and Bucks. But even when he got open in Super Bowl 52, unlike Deshaun Watson, his hands didn't seem to cooperate. Brady wasn't exactly sneaky athletic or whatever euphemisms you want to use for white guys, a <laughs> lunch pail guy, hardest worker in the building, a guy you would let date your daughter. But he was functionally athletic, as was his greatest rival, Peyton Manning. Like Brady, Manning viewed athleticism as a means to an end. Feet are for maneuvering in the pocket, not for picking up first downs. But sometimes you're so unbelievably slow that you can become a great runner. Allow me to explain. There's no time for that. Peyton still has- Can you believe it? On a few different plays over his 18 year career, Manning's rushing threat was so neglected by the defense that the naked bootleg was often wide open and Peyton exploited it like child labor in the Philippines. Manning rushed for fewer yards and touchdowns on average than Brady, but had him beat with runs of 27 and 33 yards, each of which came a decade apart. Younger brother Eli wasn't a whole lot more athletic, never cracking 600 career rushing yards. It's hard to believe that these these two came from the nutsack of Archie Manning, who ran for nearly 2,200 yards in his career, often scrambling for his actual life behind an awful offensive line in New Orleans. Just as a side note, one of Eli's backup, the late Jared Lorenzen, recorded a 5-2-8 40-yard dash at the combine, one of the slowest in history. And still, at however many pounds the hefty lefty was, he managed to look more nimble than Eli at times. But the Manning brothers looked like Olympic athletes compared to Dan Marino who ran the ball 301 times in his career for 87 yards. Seriously, 87 yards. He had a couple passes in his career that were nearly that long. And the year that Marino broke about every passing record in the book, he totaled negative seven yards on the ground. 
Marino was as stiff as a board, but he made up for his flat tires with a lightning quick release and a cannon for an arm. In fact, he ran so little, I couldn't even find any actual footage of it happening. Marino had some great duels in the 90s with Patriots quarterback Drew Bledsoe, who wielded a rocket on his right shoulder, but had the mobility of a covered wagon in the mud. Somehow it took Bledsoe until his eighth season to record his first rushing touchdown. Bizarrely, it came on a 14 yard quarterback sneak. No, not a draw, a sneak. Joe Judge must have been paying attention. Of course, the career defining play and one of the most consequential plays in NFL history was Bledsoe using his legs to try to make a play. Yes, Mo Lewis caught up to Bledsoe and sidelined him long enough for Brady to take his place in the starting lineup and totally fuck up the NFL for the next 22 years. The year before Brady was drafted, Kurt Warner burst onto the scene. Well, he never really bursted. He mostly kind of jogged. Warner wasn't an athletic marvel. He didn't have the rushing ability to speak of. And his arm was never elite, but he just made it work one way or another. Warner took off 173 times in his career and compiled just 286 yards and three rushing touchdowns. He did get a gold jacket. Ironically, it was an extremely rare rushing touchdown from Warner that helped the Rams climb back into Super Bowl 36 against Brady and the Pats before Adam Vinatieri won the game as time mysteriously expired. In between Kurt Warner's Super Bowl appearances in the NFC, the Giants made a run despite their starting quarterback barely being able to do just that. The year Kerry Collins made the Super Bowl in 2000, he carried the ball 41 times for an awe-inspiring 65 yards. But unlike the other quarterbacks I've mentioned so far, Collins didn't really have the passing talent to make up for his cement feet. And just a smidgen of athleticism may have made things easier for him against the Ravens. <laughs> Not against that defense. They kicked the shit out of the Giants. Speaking of the Ravens, what about their quarterback? No, not Trent Dilfer. I'm talking about another QB that very randomly won a Super Bowl. Joe Flacco is still somehow playing at the age of 38, and his long storied career has mostly come as a direct result of the almighty Flack Cannon. The legs, not so much, but believe it or not, there was actually a time when Flacco could kind of move. Before he ever threw for a touchdown in the NFL, Flacco got in the end zone with his feet. In his first start in 2008, he ran for the slow lowest, most lumbering 38-yard touchdown you'll ever see. It's truly mesmerizing how much that run should have never happened. That was one of just 16 career touchdown runs for Flacco, and although he never topped that 38-yarder, he never really needed to. He could pretty much throw the ball twice as far off his back foot. Philip Rivers didn't have the arm strength of Joe Flacco, but the most reproductive passer in the history of the NFL couldn't run either. 90-yard touchdown! Yard touchdown! Well, I guess he could, but he pretty much ran like old people fuck. Slow as hell and nobody gets anywhere. Rivers played 17 years in the NFL and crossed the goal line himself just three times with a career long of just 18 yards back in 2013. People are amazed that Rivers played with a torn ACL in the 2007 AFC title game, but when you barely have to move, what real use is an ACL anyways? But none of these guys are the slowest quarterbacks of all time, at least not that we've officially measured. So who is the king of molasses? That dubious honor belongs to former Raven and Falcon, Chris Redman. Yeah, the guy who had the slowest official 40 yard dash in combine history was also the guy who took over for Michael Vick in 2007. Talk about fire and ice. Redmond was a backup for most of his career, but he carried the ball more times than he had rushing yards. A majorly impressive feat for a guy who wasn't good enough to be regularly kneeling out the end of games. So when you marvel at today's athletic running QBs and Daniel Jones, just remember there was a time in the NFL where you could be a pillar of salt behind the line and still win games. I'm Five Points Vids and you made it to the abrupt end of this video.